Hi guys, welcome to my channel. You're watching Botany Buzz, and uh, I'm Suman. I'm a basic student, and today I wanna discuss an very important topic, which is the fungi. Aspergillus. Aspergillus is in genus and belongs to family Aspergillaceae. It's health kingdom mycota and division eumycota. So, first we will discuss about the habitat of Aspergillus. So, Aspergillus is commonly a uh, saprophytic genus. So, as it is saprophytic, you guys can guess that uh, it is uh, mainly grows on foodstuffs. So, its habitat become. Foodstuffs, uh, veggies, fruits. So these are the habitats of Aspergillus. Uh, it may be grow on many foodstuffs like jellies, pickles, jams. As you guys can in your the foodstuffs which is related to foodstuffs so these mainly foodstuffs are and it may grow on some unusual places like a leather or textile so it may be very harmful as it can spoils the these leather and textile material of course because it's a fungus and it spoils them so let's move as everything as two aspects negative and positive so let's see what's the negative aspect of aspergillus so guys as it's a fungus and it is a parasitic in nature parasitic nature uh, it damage our foodstuffs Also, it uh, rotates the fruits and veggies. It also very, you know, very carcinogenic in nature because aspergillus flavors. Aspergillus flavors is produce produces uh, alpha toxins which are carcinogenic so we can say that the negative points are that these are parasitic in nature causes diseases the diseases may be in animals or in uh, human beings it is a uh, saprophytic so grows in foodstuffs veggies and leather textiles so it damages foodstuffs rotten fruits and veggies alpha aspergillus flavors produce alpha toxins 
and alpha toxins are carcinogenic so aspergillus is carcinogenic in nature also aspergillus causes a disease which is known as aspergillosis it is mainly an allergic allergenic disease uh, mainly it is uh, it causes uh, skin rashes in human beings so these are some negative aspects of aspergillus so let's move to the positive aspects of aspergillus guys aspergillus is also very you know beneficial to us because uh, several species of uh, aspergillus are used to obtain organic acids so we can say that aspergillus is beneficial as it helps in the formation of organic acids enzymes and uh, maybe antibiotics antibiotics because i will give a reason for this antibiotics is in positive aspects of aspergillus because aspergillus some aspergillus species like aspergillus fumigatus is have having antifungal properties antifungal properties means aspergillus fumigates inhibits the growth of another fungus it means it doesn't allow any other fungus to grow so it have antifungal properties so we can use it as an antibiotic against any other disease so that's why it is used in antibiotics the second aspect may be that aspergillus is uses in biological processes because it can trace even the minimum zero point something amount of metal even smallest quantity of metal it can trace it smallest we can see so it is used in biological processes such as metal may be zinc molybdenum any so these are mainly the negative and positive aspects of aspergillus. So let's move to the vegetative structure of aspergillus. Our second main point is of aspergillus. So, aspergillus mycelium is, I will draw it for you, is well developed, we can say profusely branched, interwoven with each other, forming a net like structure. It is septate, we can draw septa. Multinucleate, drawing a multinuclear more than one nuclear. So as you guys can see, I, the mycelium is uh, 
multinucleate so here we can get one more point that the mycelium may be homocaryotic or heterocaryotic i will explain it as the mycelium of aspergillus is multinucleated multinucleate so it may be homocaryotic or heterocaryotic homo means simply uh, one type homo means one is similar one type of nucleus karyo means nucleus uniquely one type of nucleus and heterocaryotic means hetero means different you need two or more type of nucleus so how is it possible so let us take an example that it is a type of nucleus and it is b type of nucleus multinucleus let a or b both types they may combine and form a new type of nucleus which is the combination of both a and b and let's say it as a c so it become more than one nucleus we get three type of nucleuses so this phenomena is known as heterokaryotic so this is mainly the vegetative structure of aspergillus and aspergillus vegetative structure the it may be consist of um, the reserve food material as oil droplets as a reserve food material and uh, aspergillus also consist of uh, mitochondria like organelles like mitochondria ribosomes and the important process that occur between in the cells of aspergillus there occur pores pores are present due to which there is a cytoplasmic retention in sorry I read it wrong cytoplasmic retention between the cells cytoplasmic retention is simply having a cytoplasmic balance just as this is a cell this is another cell they just touch each other this is the next cell this is the next and these have pores in between them these have pores it means this there is a cytoplasmic balance all have a you know balance in their cytoplasmic if if this ha this cell has some less quantity of cytoplasm that it will give it some part of its cytoplasm that all the cell in the row have a cytoplasmic balance between them they can share their products or there is a streaming between all the cells through the pores so this phenomena is known as cytoplasmic retention and this occur in aspergillus so guys it's all about the vegetative structure of aspergillus
let's move to the next and very important topic of aspergillus which is reproduction in aspergillus so in aspergillus we have both both um, uh, we can say all type of reproduction sexual asexual and vegetative all type of reproduction is present and can be seen in aspergillus so firstly we will discuss the vegetative reproduction in aspergillus so mainly in aspergillus we have uh, a vegetative reproduction uh, and it occurs by the process of fragmentation fragmentation is the most common type of vegetative reproduction if you guys don't have no idea about any of the fungus vegetative reproduction just write fragmentation it is the most most common type of vegetative reproduction in any fungus not only in aspergillus i'm talking about all the fungi is just write fragmentation and you will get mark for it because it's it's very very common type of uh, vegetative reproduction is aspergillus and, and as no, fragmentation is very simple process let's uh, we have this uh, hyphae uh, of the um, mycelium as you guys know that the common uh, common did they uh, simple is most uh, the you can say most uh, smallest unit in any fungi is the hyphae it forms mycelium and mycelium form all the vegetative part of any vegetative structure of any fungi okay so let's uh, we have a simple septa it uh, may be from here it just whole the mycelium is here present and this this end just take this end is broken down and this is known as fragment a simple fragment a simple part now this fragment is able to regrow the whole aspergillus mycelium so from a smaller fragment we are able to get the whole mycelium again this process is known as fragmentation and guys we are at bsc level so we have to mention that this fragment formation or we we just can't write that fragmentation is a process in which the only a single fragment can able to regrow the mycelium again we have to write the reason that how this fragment form this fragment can be formed due to any accident breakage accident breakage maybe due to any external pressure any external disturbance in the mycelium any insect as it grows on food stuff so maybe the food stuff can be accidentally broken down due to which the fragments are also broken so we have to mention the reason for the fragmentation process so now next we will move to the next process of reproduction which is asexual reproduction so in aspergillus asexual reproduction is occur by conidia formation it is also again very very common type of uh, asexual reproduction so 
let us uh, take a simple introduction to the asexual reproduction that asexual reproduction is uh, carried out by conidia formation and how this conidia is formed now we will study the formation of this conidia so before the formation of conidia we have the vegetative hyphae so we have a simple hyphae here it is and some of the cells of the hyphae start growing more vigorously or more faster than the other cells such as these are the other cells and this is the one cell that it grows in size then these these cells are smaller but this cell has a large septa and it forms a thick layer around itself this cell is multinucleate of course because aspergillus hyphae is multinucleate so this cell is known as foot cell what will happen that this cells start making a branching and this branching accumulates more and more cytoplasm from all other cells and how it takes the cytoplasm from these cells because the cells have pores between them and due to this these pores cytoplasmic retention occur and this branching start accumulating more and more cytoplasm and form a whole like structure circular and this structure enlarges and form a rounded in shape and this is known as vesicle now this vesicle may be i just draw here a rounded structure but vesicle may be variously shaped maybe it may be hemisphere in shape maybe spherical in shape rounded flat means star like unevenly distributed means it is variously shaped so I just draw a symbol to make it convenient for you guys. So what happens that this vesicle starting producing uh, some outing structures and these outgrowths of the vesicle are known as sterigmata or phyllids. These are known as sterigmata. these sterigmata are nothing these are just the outgrowth of vesicle what will happen next is that these sterigmata nucleus divides into two and what will happen that it slightly make a constriction one of the nucleus travels from the sterigmata to the constriction part so what will happen next that i'm drawing this here it forms like this one nucleus remains in sterigmata and other goes into the constriction part and also some cytoplasm is also goes so this structure is the final result conidia so you guys are able to understand what is conidia and how it forms okay so for the owner students you can't write and this chain is just forms again and again so for honors students i'm saying for the honor students that you guys can't say that asexual reproduction occurs by conidia form you guys have to explain this whole process that how conidia form how 
does the futsal form how does this conigio four forms this this whole structure is known as conigio four so for honor students uh, you guys have to understand the basic uh, things first yeah yep yeah. i'm an honor student and i feel that in honors we guys have to explain everything more and more deeply so that's why i'm saying this okay so this is the asexual reproduction in aspergillus now i'm just showing the structure of conidia okay guys so conidia is a spherical or rounded in structure somewhat it has an uh, it's like the pollen grains you guys have learning as uh, angiosperms is just like a pollen grain but it's an conidia in the case of fungi outer layer is known as exine and inner there is a small nucleus it's uninucleate unicellular cytoplasm and this is exine this is in time uh, this is nucleus okay guys so this is the structure of conidia and uh, you can say that you guys can easily explain write more even three or four lines about it that too each conidia contains a small unit uh, each conidia is a small uninucleate globules or somewhat rounded in shape it may contain yeah it's an uh, important point that conidia may contain pigments and pigments may be green or brown or yellow in color so due to which the conidia may be colorful and this point is also noticed in conidio force that the asexual reproduction structure which is known as conidio for uh, and conidia both of them have pigments mainly fungi have do not any pigments but in conidio force and in conidia there are uh, we can see colorful pigments which may be green brown or yellow due to which we can see the colored formation on the any rotten bread or any rotten jelly or veggies the color color uh, in uh, usually fungi do not have any pigment but these vegetative uh, sorry asexual structures have some pigments due to which we can see the coloring so coloring over the bread which is infected by aspergillus so the coloring structures we saw on any bread or any rotten veggie is due to the formation of asexual structures which are conidio for and conidia so this point is clear here that what is the reason behind the coloring of the rotten bread or the rotten veggies okay so let's move to the next point which is sexual reproduction so guys let me clear you one thing that sexual reproduction is very uncommon in case of aspergillus very 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 uncommon i'm clearing this point there is a reason behind the uh, uncommon of uh, aspergillus uh, sexual reproduction in aspergillus there is only few species i can write the species name aspergillus herbarium oh good save us from these typical names 
I found them very hard to pronunciate but what we can do and aspergillus repens so these these are the main species in which we can find sexual reproduction otherwise sexual reproduction is very uncommon in aspergillus but still we have to study is because it is found in some species so uh, let us talk about the simple topic that uh, sexual reproduction so it may also have sexual structures this may be uh, male or in female male is uh, antheridium or female is ascogonia okay so antheridia ascogonia they may be homothallic or heterothallic these are the most uh, simple terms uh, but you guys have to explain homothallic in which both ascogonium and antheridium occur in same or adjacent mycelium so this may be homothallic and if these are occur on different mycelium then it will be heterothallic these are the simple terms okay guys so let's move to the um, first point which is uh, development of ascogonium so ascogonium is uh, just like uh, we studies the uh, conidio formation same in the process of ascogonium ascogonium start developing from an uh, simple hyphae cells this cell enlarges get somewhat coiled and form an upper structure which is somewhat like this and this is known as uh, trichogyne it is receptive means it uh, recept the male reproductive structure and this middle part is known as uh, uh recept uh, uh, middle part is known as female gametangium and this basal part is known as stalk okay guys so this is ascogonium it is somewhat coiled in structure this uh, trichogyne is multinucleate and multicellular uh, female gametangia is uninucleate and unicellular and stalk is again multinucleate and multicellular these are divided by septa okay these are multinucleate this cellular this is the gametangia unicellular and this is the stalk it is multinucleate and multicellular just draw some septals this is the typically don't take it as a funny diagram is quite funny but it's the diagram of ascogonium next is the in the next point in the uh, sexual reproduction is the formation of antheria the antheridia is uh, formed within the formation of uh, form both ascogonium and antheridium form uh, basically nearly in the branches just like here so antheridium also start from developing from a simple hyphae it is um, somewhat coiled in structure 
you can say like this coil sorry guys i can't draw it so that perfect but it is coiled and it is multinucleate multinucleate and multi cellular means it have septa thruli okay so the upper part is known as anthridium proper proper and this uh, lower part like this is known as stalk okay guys so in the case of aspergillus the male branch or we can say the anthridia branches known as uh, it's a quite different thing that the male branch is anthridia and in the case of aspergillus is it is known as pollinagium it is quite rare case that male branch is known as pollinagium in case of aspergillus so this is the formation of anthridia simple septa or we can say hyphae start developing coil get coiled it is multinucleate multicellular so this is the typical structure of anthridia so it is an uh, there is an important point that in why the sexual reproduction is uncommon in the case of aspergillus so the reason for the uncommonness of the sexual reproduction in aspergillus is that there is a gradual elimination of formation of anthridia gradual elimination of formation of anthridia it simply means that anthridia is not goodly or we can say not properly developed in aspergillus so why it is not developed that the in i explain you that aspergillus herbarium and uh, repens these have proper anthridia and proper ascogonium but other species of aspergillus do not have anthridial development means a uh, proper development of anthridia is absent is absent and if by any chance uh, the anthridia is form then what happens that the cytoplasmic intermixtion of uh, uh, anthridia do not occur so in some species anthridia is not developed and if developed then there is no cytoplasmic contents are 